Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Detlef. Can you hear me? Can you see me? We can see you, so you must share your screen. Oh, let me check that again. So it's now shared. It's good. So you know, presentation. So everything is perfect. Okay, go ahead. All right. So let me switch this. Detlef, first of all, I'd like to thank you and all the others from the Academy to, uh, for inviting me to give this uh, talk. And I'm uh, very happy that I can outline here uh, briefly some of my uh, latest uh, research results. So uh, let, me, let me start with uh, some numbers. So a uh, first uh, question is uh, how dangerous is uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus? And uh, according uh, to an actual study published in The Lancet, the infection fatality ratio averaged over all age groups, including those who don't have symptoms, is between 0.2% and 1.6%. So there's quite some range, but uh, these numbers look small and the death risk may seem acceptable, but you must be aware that the Apollo crew, the space shuttle astronauts and the Allied soldiers during the 2003 Iraq war took a deadly risk of this magnitude. According to the same study, their mortality rate is about 30 times higher than for the influenza flu. And if nothing is done against the pandemic, the number of victims will be enormous. I personally, therefore, regard the virus as very dangerous. Herd immunity is uh, fatal at these numbers. The hope for a vaccine or an accept, um, effective uh, medicine is not helpful in the current situation. We need reliable and efficient measures to stop, stop the transmission of the virus. So what makes the fight against the pandemic so difficult? Well, 44% of SARS-CoV-2 infections are actually caused by uh, people who are uh, pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic. So many people do not know that they are infected and are spreading the virus. 10% of infected people are responsible for 80% of infections. So people who have many social contacts and consider the risk of the virus to be low or who do not protect themselves sufficiently are, in my opinion, a serious problem in fewer activities such as singing, sorting packages, or working in a slaughterhouse. Anyhow, these numbers show that the government must act to prevent a great harm to the people. But actually, what can be done? Well, since the Spanish flu, it's known that a lockdown can effectively contain the pandemic and save lives. But in the long run, this is dangerous for society, economy, state, and also for democracy. So what should be protected, the people or the economy? The question is wrongly posed because one must protect people and economy equally in order to safeguard the state, the economy, the society, and democracy. Since a long-term lockdown is not the solution, the virus must be fought where it's transmitted. And actually, uh, at the beginning, uh, contact infection were initially assumed to be the main transmission route. But today, because of the uh, hygiene measures and the avoidance of shaking hands, uh, this effectively prevents the path of infection. Anyhow, droplet infection is currently assumed to be the main transition route. And uh, since this path of infection is via the air, the rules of distance are effective. During the lockdown, the distance rule can usually be ahead of two. But what happens when the actual lockdown is over and we meet again in confined spaces? Then the wearing of suitable breathing masks will be absolutely necessary to protect the population. Let me demonstrate this with some quantitative flow field measurements with particle image flow symmetry. This technique resolves the magnitude and direction of the flow motion in a measurement plane. So color coded is the velocity magnitude in the following videos. You can see how a short, strong cuff sets the air in motion in an area close to 1.5 meter. In this area, the droplets can be distributed by exhalation. 
If the droplets are loaded with viruses, infection can occur uh, if the viral, uh, viral load is sufficiently high and the exposure time is sufficiently long. Outside the area, the area is at rest and contamination with droplets or aerosols therefore does not take place. If the air in the room is in motion, however, the aerosol cloud can be transported further. Now we look at the same procedure, but this time the person is wearing a simple mask. The spread of droplets from the air move movement is almost completely contained due to the mouth and nose cover. Therefore, an infected person coughing on another person will not infect that person over greater distance. For comparison, let's take a look at how large the flow propagation of, sorry, um, let me start that again. Um, so let's, uh, let's look how, uh, how large the flow propagation of the droplets is when speaking. So speaking is very important because many people who are presymptomatic or asymptomatic can affect others while speaking. It is clear that speaking without a mask can lead to greater spatial contamination in coughing with a mouse to nose cover, mouse and nose cover. This is why a mouse and nose cover is so important to effectively prevent other people from being affected by droplets. If the red dot is an infected person protected by a simple mouse and nose cover, the air does not spread to the healthy person shown in green when breathing, speaking, coughing, singing, and sneezing. This makes dealing with other people quite safe as long as you don't get too close and the virus load in the environment is not too high. If all wear these masks and keep sufficient distance, we can protect ourselves quite well. But simple mouse and nose covers are not able to filter out small droplets effectively. Therefore, they do not offer a self-protection when the air is full of SARS-CoV-2. I will demonstrate that again with some test results. This shows the setup. So during the test, the inlet of a flow channel was fitted with various filter materials and small aerosol droplets, which were irregularly distributed outside the channel, were then sucked into the material, uh, through the material by the low pressure in the channel and transported away. The droplets were again illuminated with a laser light sheet on the plane of symmetry, and the scattered light emitted by the droplets was recorded by a camera on both sides of the filter material. The comparison of the particle image density in front and behind the filter is a measure of the filtering effect. It can be clearly seen that under conditions comparable to those of official mask certifications, uh, um, according to the uh, EN 149 uh, specifications, droplets with a diameter between 0.3 and 2 micrometer are not effectively filtered out by uh, these simple masks. To illustrate visually how reliably a uh, suitable filter material works, I show you this work, uh, video. So almost no droplets pass the filter material. So now one might think that a mouse and nose cover or a surgical mask made of good filter material also provides good protection against infection when infected people are in the vicinity. But air takes the path of least resistance through the gap at the edge of the mouse and nose cover. In my view, this is a fatal that medical personnel are often so poorly protected. But it is also fatal for patients if clinical staff with the pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic cause of infection uses these masks. So keep in mind, the flow takes a path of least resistance. And if you have gaps, the, the flow will follow through these gaps along with all the particles and droplets. Only a tight fitting particle filtering respirator guarantees self-protection within the specifications. But to ensure that this particle filtering respirator also provides good protection for people in the vicinity, the respirator must not have an outlet valve 
Otherwise, the following will happen. It's very important to recognize the three key functions of face masks. First, face masks effectively prevent a smear infection, as the wearers of the mask no longer perform their habitual grip on the face and thus no longer bring the virus from the hand into the mouth or the nose. The flow resistance, as seen, is very important to limit the spread of the viruses. This significantly reduces the risk of infection for others. The particle filtering properties of the mask prevent the inhalation of droplets, at least when they are tight uh, fitting. So now the question is, why have politicians and virologists in many countries denied effective, the effectiveness of masks in protecting uh, the population? It was claimed that there is no scientific evidence that masks can protect. There are indeed some studies that suggest that masks are not effective. This is not surprising either. If people use a simple mouth and nose cover, but distance and hygienic rules are not followed, then there is no significant protection. Only a mouth and nose cover in combination with appropriate distances and hygienic behavior can reduce the infection rate on average. If all people use suitable particle filtering respirators correctly, there is no doubt that the transmission of viruses is effectively prevented. Otherwise, these types of masks would never have received certification, nor would they be a core component of the personal protective equipment in hospitals and other environments. It is therefore not credible why these respiratory masks should offer protection to medical staff but not to the population. The fallacy was to generalize from results from simple mask to all mask. Another argument that the population is not able to use the mask correctly was often stated in the press. Why should the people of Western societies not be able to protect themselves as many Asians and, uh, have long been doing? Many Asians have already recognized through numerous uh, pandemics what works effectively. I do not think it's, a right to, it's not right to regard the population as unteachable or even incapable. Finally, it was argued that masks would make people feel safe and then make them careless about the rules of distance and um, hygiene. Actually, the opposite is true according to scientific studies. If you protect yourself personally, you have dealt with the danger and therefore you benefit from the protection of the safety device and from the less risky behavior due to insight. All these arguments against face masks are incorrect arguments. The politicians and virologists simply wanted to prevent the shortage of a mask for hospital staff from becoming even greater as demand from the population increases. So let me conclude. If only a few people are infected in an environment and spacing is possible, then mouse and nose covers are recommended. If there are many infected people nearby, such as in a hospital, or if you spend a long time with infected people in a small, poorly ventilated room, then a suitable particle filtering respirator is highly recommended. If the second wave leads to a large number of infected persons, and distance cannot be achieved, a very good particle uh, filtration mask is strongly recommended. I would also recommend these masks for people with relevant uh, previous illnesses. And uh, some people, of course, uh, cannot wear this mask for health reasons. In this case, the best protection is to keep a large distance. Face masks can save lives while maintaining social life and security securing uh, the economy, economy and the state. If we could block transition completely for four weeks, the virus would be eliminated. But universal masking alone is not a panacea for two reasons. First, people are not very good at following rules consistently. Therefore, it is advisable 
to observe the rules of hygiene and distance and to be careful. Also, in the case of a car, you have many fac uh, facilities to protect yourself in an accident. Bumper, crumble zone, belt, headrest, airbags, large head and foot space, and so on. So it's very important to, uh, to keep as many safety measures, measure, measures as possible. Second, some people are extremely bad at following rules, either because they don't want to or because they simply can't. These people can become super spreaders. Therefore, the early detection of sources of infection and their isolation remains, remains important. Thank you very much for your attention.